It is wonderful to know that our nation has codified into law a day that the entire nation is called to prayer. You got to appreciate and understand what that means because there are nations that would never do that. In fact, religion is under persecution. So to be in a nation where we have a day that we set apart to honor prayer, I think it's very, very critical that we appreciate and understand that. So it was a two day event, incredible time. Had time to visit Senator Charles Schumer, talk about some things that are going on, and I'll give you some updates uh, on what I've been busy doing as I've had more time to travel, interact with government and other institutions in our society to bridge the relationship between church and state. When you think of America's division of church and state or separation of church and state, don't think that it's a separation or isolation from each other. No, it's simply a separation of authority that the state should not have authority over the church and the church not have authority over the state. But there is to be a working relationship. And one of the things that I've been able to do over the last 18 months with this administration is actually formalize that relationship into two entities. One is the New York State Interfaith Council and the other, which our governor has cooperated with and established an actual office within her administration and future administrations called the Office of Faith and Not-for-Profit Services. So it links churches, which are not only the moral centers of our community, but the social services centers in many ways, bringing services to our community, like the partnership that you heard about today with Columbia University. The church is still, or houses of worship, are still the largest people base that people gather in community. It is the voice of the people on the ground where people are experiencing life in their various communities. So it's important that we understand those kind of relationships. There are those who feel that the church should be totally separate from the world, totally separate from government and all of these things. And those are the churches that end up turning to government for help in time of crisis. So you got to make up your mind which way you're going to go with this. The reality is, and, and I love the model that's found when Israel went into captivity, when they lost their kingdom, their nation, and they ended up in captivity in Babylon. What was Jeremiah the prophet's word to them? Settle down. Did you hear that? In Babylon, he told them to what? Settle down. Build houses. Plant gardens. Marry your children. In other words, position yourself within the society. And then these are the powerful words. And pray Amen. for the peace and prosperity of the city. Because if it prospers, you will prosper. In other words, he tied the prosperity of his own people with the prosperity of the environment that they were in that was in another place spiritually and religiously. How many know that Nebuchadnezzar did not convert to Judaism? Some of you look shocked. No. He never converted to Judaism, which raises the question, then what was the purpose of Daniel being in Nebuchadnezzar's court? It was not to convert Nebuchadnezzar, but to be a presence in relationship with those in power for the protection and preservation of the Jewish people who were in captivity. So you've got to understand that there are times when we have relationships and positions of power for the sake of our people. Come on, I need you to step it up here. How many understand what I'm talking about? Relationships is a network for life. 
And not everybody that God sends you to will be converted. But just maybe the purpose of that relationship is for the good, whether it's the common good of society at large, but specifically for those who are the people of God. Too often we think very narrow in a way that separates us from the very things that we need in order to get things accomplished within a society. So it is about Christ in culture. It is about Christ in the society effecting change. Relationships is critical within the society and for the purpose of effecting change. So I appreciate your prayers, CCC. Our name is Christian Cultural Center. So we believe that Christianity brings a culture and places us within the larger culture to bring influence. Jesus did not teach that the unclean makes the clean unclean. He taught that the clean makes the unclean clean. So our position is to be salt and light. You have no right to stand on the sideline and curse the darkness. If darkness is the absence of light, then it's because you're not there that the darkness is wreaking havoc. Am I preaching to anybody this morning? How many believe that God called us to be the light of the world, the light in the darkness? So don't be cursing the darkness and getting mad if you're not doing anything about it. If you're not bringing your light to the situation, if you're not bringing your light to the context. So God will place you in areas for the specific person, a purpose of being light in that darkness and being the salt of the earth, right? And how many know salt doesn't, wasn't designed when they used salt to preserve meat? It was just that. It was not to convert the meat into salt. You're getting it wrong, folks. The reason they rubbed salt in is to preserve the integrity of the meat so it wouldn't spoil. The reason God placed us as salt in the earth is to preserve the moral integrity and spiritual integrity of humanity so that it doesn't rot because of sin and death. Amen. 